Your Daily 180, 180 Seconds of Pure Bible Study. Fear can be a good counselor, but it, it is a horrible jailer that shackles the child of God and renders them ineffective in what God would have them to accomplish. Welcome to this, your Daily 180 Bible Study. We're studying the subject of fear. Matthew chapter 10 is our primary text. Yesterday, we began asking the question, why is it that Jesus says three times, do not fear? And what's the background of that? Well, let's look at Matthew chapter 10. Yesterday, we looked at verse 16. He says, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. That is a pretty scary prospect. This is a weird motivational speech. If you think about it in today's terms, Jesus would not fit into modern day Christianity any better than he did in the first century. I'm talking about the way people practice Christianity. Notice what he says in verse 17, but beware of men for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in the synagogues. These are religious people are going to go after the 12. Notice what he says in verse uh, number 22. He says, and you will be hated by all men, uh, hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Jesus, couldn't you be a little more upbeat? Couldn't you give him a rah-rah message and be a better pep, uh, you know, pep rally here and a better cheerleader than that? I mean, you're going to get people discouraged saying you're going to be hated. He said, well, now, uh, listen to the truth of the matter. Look at verse number 25. He says, it is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? They call me a devil. What do you think they're going to call you? Notice verse number 26. He says, therefore, do not fear them. Right on the heels of saying, look, they hated me, they're going to hate you. They called me a devil, they're going to say that you are devils as well. What do, you, what do you expect? Now here's the reality. Jesus is not giving us some pie in the sky, wishful thinking, saying that if you're a Christian, everything's going to be smooth sailing. But he's saying, we have a great purpose. Just like the great warriors of the past were fighting for the freedom of others, if you're a child of God, you are fighting for the freedom of the world. There are people who are enslaved to sin and we're fighting for their freedom. And listen, Satan and his forces will not give them up easily. But we need not fear because we're on the winning team if you're a child of God. Join us again tomorrow.